Hi everyone, welcome to the series on doing your sound design in Cubase. Through this series, I'm going to show you how you can create your own sounds and instruments with the stock instruments and effects. No more need for scanning through presets trying to find the sounds you want. Rather learn how the instruments tick through watching this series, then you can easily jump to instruments and effects and design the sounds you want. We're going to go through synthesis tricks with the included instruments and ways to manipulate audio with the effects and tools available within the application. First off, let's take a look at how you can build up your own synthetic percussive sounds. This is quite a nice one to start off with because by figuring out how to do some percussive sounds, you're gonna get a look into how synthesis works. I'm going to be using Retrolog and you'll get a good idea of how it works and you'll also be able to take the same theories that you learn with this synth and move this across to other synths and instruments in Cubase. So let's start off with a default patch of Retrolog. Here we go, this is just the default patch. And I want to just start off with oscillator one and I want to create a kick sound. So with oscillator one, I want to move over to a sine waveform and keep the octave setting set to eight. So you've got your sine waveform there. And next I want to move over to the amp envelope. I want to bring everything down on the ADSR and just slightly bring up the decay. So you're getting a sort of percussive element and then bring in a slight bit of release. So there you can hear you've got a percussive sound. Then to add some attack to the sound, also add in some sub oscillation to give it some more weight. I play higher up, you'll hear that. And what's also nice is to add in some white noise just to give some attack to the sound. You can hear that, but that's a bit loud for the noise, so I'm just going to back that off slightly on the mix section. So it can be very low. So you're getting an attack, but you're still getting that lowness of a kick. Now to shape this kick sound, Let's move over onto the filter. On this, you want to use a low pass with a 24 notch, and then you can cut off some of the high end detail with this cutoff dial. I find that by just cutting off a little bit of that extra high end makes it sound more like a kick and sits better in the mix. Then what you also have is you've got a filter envelope. And you can use this envelope parameter here to alter how this cutoff reacts with the envelope. What works pretty well is to have a low attack, a slight decay, and slight sustain with a short release. Then when you open up the envelope, it's opening up the filter and then cutting it back again, determined by these ADSR settings. So here's with no envelope, and then increasing this. That's sounding pretty good for a kick sound. Now next up, let's see how we can create a synthetic hat sound. For this, I'm also gonna use an instance of Retrolog with the default patch. But starting off, let's just use some white noise. Now be careful, when I play this back, it's going to play back the whole frequency range. That's basically what white noise is. There's sound occupying the whole frequency range like this. Now, obviously, that's a bit too noisy. So what you want to do is you want to filter out the sound to create a hat sound. And we can shape this by first going over to the amp envelope and pulling down this sustain and increasing the decay slightly and pull down the release. So we've got this. What you'll find is by increasing this decay, sort of, opens up like as if you had a hat opening up. And having that short sustain is just giving you an extra length to that sound. You could actually pull the release up slightly if you wanted to. That's sounding quite good there with that shape on your amp envelope. Then on the filter, you want to use a high pass with a 24 notch. Then if you play now with it, all the way up, you've got no sound because it's cut off all the high end. Pulling this back is going to allow some of that high end detail back in. 
And obviously, a hats type of instrument is occupying the high register, so you want to cut out the low end, but still retain some of the high end detail. And also, you can shape this by using a filter envelope. Pull everything down, then maybe increase the decay slightly and the sustain with a bit of release. And if you open up the envelope, you can hear how that's opening up that filter. But I want this sitting at about zero. And that's quite nice in the middle there with the cutoff. What also adds some life to this hats is to jump across to the effects, add some delay, maybe in the form of some eighth note delay, set to the stereo mode, and mix this in. You really don't need a lot of it. Also, some reverb to give it a sense of space. I'll leave it set to the default settings and just pull back the mix and increase this. There you go. So now what we've got is a kick part and then a hats. The level on this can probably come down. And just to differentiate these different tracks, let's rename them. So this is going to be Retro Kick. So I know it's a Retrolog instrument using a kick. And this can be Retro Hats. Finally, I want to show you how you can create a snare type of sound. So again, add an instance of Retrolog. With this, let's start off with something different. How about using Oscillator 2? And on here, we're going to be using a triangle waveform. Set the octave to 2, so it's higher up. Then add some white noise. And then mix these together. You want quite a bit of noise, but bring down the level on oscillator 2. And play low down on the keyboard, maybe. Then the next step is to shape the amp envelope of it, and like you saw, then going to the filter to shape the sound even further. So on the ADSR, we want a short attack. Maybe increase this decay slightly with a short sustain and very short release. That's sounding good. Then for the filter, let's also use a high pass with a 24 notch. Pull this back. Somewhere around 150 hertz, so it's cutting out all the low end detail. And shape the filter envelope with a short sustain. You can leave the release set to 30 milliseconds and then with a decay at about maybe 50 milliseconds and increase this envelope to shape how that cutoff filter is reacting. And when you play up and down the keyboard, you've got it re-pitching the snare, which is pretty cool and quite unique if you wanted to use it. So now let me open up a drum pattern that I've programmed in with MIDI so you can hear what the synthetic drum kit sounds like now. And also don't forget to rename your tracks so you know what everything is. So here, as you can see, we've got the kick, hats, and snare. I've programmed in some MIDI note data, just so you can hear that synthetic drum kit in action now. And in the context with another instrument, I've added a retrolog style pad sound over here. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create a pad sound like this with Retrolog. But as you can see in this video, you get a good idea of how you can use synthesis to create percussive elements by choosing the oscillators you want to use and then shaping them with the amp envelopes and the filter, the cutoff frequency, and the filter envelope. Now, in the next video, let's see how you can design some other common synth sounds.